fire is actually quite powerful when it comes to this kind of thing. Using two rail sweeps, um, being able to use a shape creation, um, using our sheets feature. And welcome to the 2023 Betrate Online User Group Meeting. My name's Becky and in this session I'm going to show you the wonderful world of design and make. So at Vetric, not only do we develop software, but we also develop 3D relief models that are available on our online store at designandmake.com. And in this session, I'm going to show you how you can take a typical design and make model project and look at the various tools in the software that we have to assemble a model to create a composition. So let's jump in and we'll get started. So you want to head over to designandmake.com. Then go into the store, and this is where you can view our extensive library of relief models where we have over 2,000 individual pieces of CNC ready 3D clip art across a variety of categories. Then we have over 200 model projects, and these are made up of multiple individual models that work together to create an array of different layouts, where our projects are designed to give you all the elements and inspiration that you need to create a complete project, as well as the flexibility to create your own versions using the individual components. And this is actually what we're going to focus on in this session. Then we have over 10 collections, and these are built on a series of projects to form one collection at a discounted price. We also regularly upload Hack of the Week projects that consists of existing clip art available in the store to make a new project to really show you the flexibility of combining different models in the store to make something new. And the possibilities really are endless. So how are people using Design and Make models? Well, there are many ways that people are integrating Design and Make models with their CNC projects for applications such as sign making, cabinetry, awards, furniture, gifts, art, appliques, and much more. And you can see here, these are all great examples of how you can use our models to make strong, unique pieces. Okay, so that's pretty much Design and Make in a nutshell. Now we actually have lots of free models to get you started. So all you need to do is sign up and download your clip art in the V3M format to use with your Vectric software and see how good our models are for yourself. Now we're going to focus on a typical model project where all of our models have been carefully created and curated to ensure that they are not only of excellent quality on their own, but that they are versatile amongst other models in the project or across the store. And so in this session, we're going to look at a model project that is actually exclusive to the user group meeting bundle pack. And you won't actually find this on the design and make store. So this is autumn fun number one. So this project contains 11 individual models, as well as two assembled layouts to get you on your way. And what I love about the Design and Make clip art is that you can make endless layouts and really stretch the content that you have. For example, check out all of these example layouts that we've created using a combination of the models in this project. Then you can also push the boundaries even further and think about how you can hack models with other models from the store or even from your own library. So check out the given gonk, for example. So we specifically created the gonk so that its hands would be able to hold other models really easily. And so now you have a gonk that you can apply to all sorts of holidays. And so we make it super easy for you to mix and match models to create your own layouts and bring out your inner artist. So let's take a look at an example of a model project and how we can use Vectric software to push the boundaries. So we're going to show you how easy it is to assemble individual models to create your own using various editing tools in the software. So let's jump straight in. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to run the installer. 
actually comes with this project okay so we just go through uh, the setup that we've got here so this is where uh, you just want to read through all of the information and agree to uh, the license agreement uh, and then what will happen is um, the installer will actually install the project to your design and make folder within your clipart library and we can easily access that from our Vectric software. So then what we need to do is we just need to simply open up our Vectric product. So I'm actually going to be using VCov Pro in this session. However, this is compatible with um, VCov Desktop and with Aspire as well. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new file. So we're going to work with a single sided job. Then we need to set up our job size. Now this is quite important at this stage because we are working with imported models. So you want to really create your job size so that it's just a little bit bigger than the finished sign or part that you want to make. So for example, if I wanted to make a, a sign that is nine inches by nine inches, then I'd go for a job size of 10 by 10. So I've just got creating a little border around the outside. And what that will do is just ensure that I retain the maximum quality of the 3D models within my job space, which is all down to the modeling resolution. And so the modeling re resolution, when you are working with 3D, I recommend that you work minimally with very high resolution. Um, and what this does, it just increases the number of points within your job um, to ensure that we can kind of maximize the quality of our 3D parts. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to work with a job size that is exactly like we have here, 10 by 10, but then when we come to cut our part out, it's only gonna be, let's say, two inches by two inches, because we're gonna really lose the quality and the resolution in that model. So always make sure that your job size is just a little bit bigger than the overall part that you intend to create. So we're gonna go with 10 by 10, material thickness um, is 0.6 in this case. Set our Z zero position to the top surface, X, Y, lower left hand corner and again modeling resolution working with very high uh, and then we could go ahead and press ok so now our job's set up we can start to think about accessing our clip art so we're going to go into the clip art tab and you'll see we have a folder here called design and make and this folder is automatically created for us when we install uh, one of the design and make model projects and so if i click on that you'll see i have access to uh, the different model projects that i've already purchased uh, and here we can see autumn fund number one and that's the project that we just installed earlier Okay, so here you can see all of the individual models that are included in this uh, project, along with two assembled layouts. So these are perfect if you just really like the layout and you just want to add in your own personalized text. You simply drag that in and then you can create your text on top of that. And you'll also notice we have this project sheet here. So let me just stretch that out a second okay so we've got a project sheet so this is just a jpeg file and we can double click to bring that in and you'll see we've got this image here and this is a really uh, cute way of being able to see all of the models that you have available um, we give you a few possible combinations we give you some top tips so here you can see if you use um, the gonk the pumpkins and the gourds along with the wheels and some planks you can create this layout why not have the truck and then fill it with other items that are available in this project and again put some text on there to create a little sign and then we've got tips for you as well so these are just really nice useful things for you to think about and for you to realize and understand how flexible and versatile uh, the overall project is and how we can use the models with other elements to create to just to get more out of the actual model project itself so we've got two tips here and we're actually going to be looking at these in this session so top tip number one you can use the plank model so that's this one here uh, in order for you to create a sign shape 
Or, for example, we could create this kind of wagon truck if we take make use of the transform tools to, to really just alter the way that it looks. Top tip number two, as I mentioned earlier, that given gonk has been created specifically so that its hands uh, have a little bit more Z depth in them so that we can actually slot items into the hands really easy so it looks like he's holding on to them. And we're going to show you that as well. And so these project sheets are just a real nice little add on so you can see example layouts and more importantly the top tips um, for each individual project. Okay so we're going to take that and we're just going to delete it. I actually don't need to see that there and we're going to actually just start by creating our layout and we're just going to try and work solely in the 3D view to do this. So we're going to look at creating assembly number one. Okay so you already have assembly number one now, if I want to bring this item into our job, I can double click on that to bring that into the center. And then I could just hold down shift just to increase the size of that part there. Now, this is one entire model. I can't break this up. This is what we call an assembled layout. OK, so it's one piece of clip art. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we come to create this layout that you can see here, where we're going to be looking at various different features within the software, from looking at transforming our components, from looking at how we can apply different heights to our models, that whether that be in the shape height, base heights, base heights to levels, tilts, fades, in order for us to create the composition that we've got here, where we can clearly define what's behind or in front of another component. And that's how we create um, the illusion that something is in front of another relief by tweaking and altering with the actual heights of each component. So this is going to be our end goal. And then I'll also show you how we can add in some text. And then we'll look at how we can um, apply the tool pass to cut that out. So we're actually just going to take this and we're going to delete it. Okay, I'm just going to put that in the Z view. So we're going to start by creating a cart made up of planks, just like we saw in the project sheet tip. So we're going to double click to bring that into the center of our job. Okay, and so with that in our job, you can see we've got access to our handles. We have transformation handles to alter the size. We've got rotation handles to rotate our part. We've got a gizmo here to alter the heights interactively. We also have a box here that will open up the properties for our component. And we'll look at those two um, shortly. For now, what I want to do is I just want to create our kind of um, the actual layout, not thinking too much about heights just yet. So what I want to do is I want to stretch this out. I really want to transform it so we're, we're working with kind of thin planks here, just kind of as you would see in a kind of vintage cart. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one handle, I'm going to hold down shift and we're just going to stretch that out. And you can see it's just stretching that out nicely. And then I'm also going to look at just shrinking that down. Again, I'm still holding uh, shift at this stage. OK, so kind of like the... Um, thickness that we've got there. So now I want to create two more copies. So this is really easy to do. And if I want to keep my copies kind of in line with the Y axis, then all I need to do is press Alt on the keyboard. So I'm going to press Control first in order for me to create a copy. Then I'm going to press Alt and my part is already selected. So now with my mouse, all I need to do is just drag one down and you'll see it's creating that copy for me like so. You can see that I'm restricted to the y-axis there, which is perfect. Okay, and I simply let go when I like the position of that. I'm going to create another copy. So again, control and alt, and then we're just going to drag that down. Okay, so something like that. Okay, let's just double click on the actual plane there, just so we can take a better look at this. Okay, so I'm still quite not happy not quite happy with how it looks so I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit more and we'll do that for all of them okay so now that we're doing this on an individual basis we're actually now kind of breaking up 
the uh, pattern here. But we also want to break the pattern up uh, even further uh, to really kind of get rid of uh, the repetitiveness that we've got here. We can see it's the, an exact replica and that's because we did use uh, an exact replica to create the other parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and take the middle one and we're going to look at using the mirror tool to kind of transform this a little more. So in the drawing tab, we're going to go to the mirror tool. Okay, so we've got various options for us to actually mirror our part. Now in this case, all I want to do is flip that horizontally. I want to make sure that create mirrored copy is switched off. And I'm just going to say flip horizontal and you can see there that's now flipped that. We've kind of broke that pattern up on the left and right hand side. If we want to break it up even more, what we could do is we could look at perhaps taking this and saying we want to flip that vertically. Um, and you can see again, we've just kind of disrupted that pattern. So now it looks like we're working, we're, we're actually looking at three individual pieces that aren't the same, but we in fact know that they actually are. So we'll close out there and I'm just going to kind of bridge the gap a little bit more uh, between each one of these planks. So we're going to take that top one, just again nudge that down using our arrow keys and we'll just nudge this one up a little bit. Um, put that in C, kind of like what we've got there. So now we're going to go back into the clip art tab and we're going to look at adding in more planks to create the kind of join effect for the actual cart itself. So to do that, let's just drag a plank in. So you can drag clip art in if you wanted to. And what we're going to do is we're just going to shrink that down. And then over here, we're just going to bring that down, but we're going to kind of rotate it. So I can use the handles here if I wanted to, or if I just press Control Z, I could kind of rotate that in increments, 45 degrees by pressing nine or zero. Uh, and that will rotate that um, clockwise or anti-clockwise. We're just going to shrink that down. Okay. Now you'll notice that is what's really handy is that with all of the models that you get within a designer make project, they're already set so that the uh, the actual models are set to merge so that they blend in with each other, which makes it super easy for you to kind of go ahead with your layouts, uh, knowing that everything's merging together and all you need to do is adjust the heights. So what we can do here is we can just kind of move that over here. I'm just going to position that somewhere like so, shrink that a little bit. So I want it kind of um, a little bit overhanging the cart itself. Might just stretch that over. And now you can see we've got this green area. Now what this green area means is the software's way of telling us that part of this component is actually hidden behind another component. So we've got these three planks. And if we take a look here, because we've shrunk this plank down, this new plank down so much, um, what it's done is it's actually shrunk the Z height uh, in proportion to the actual overall shape. And so that shape height is being lost now to the planks that sit above it. And what we can do is we can alter the heights of the plank to kind of raise that above so it looks like it's in front of these planks. And that's ideally is what we want to do at this stage. So I'm going to use this handle here. So this yellow box uh, represents the base height change. And then the top arrow represents the overall, uh, the, the actual shape height of the part. Okay, I'm going to look at shape height shortly. Uh, shortly even. <laughs> but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and take our base height. And all we're going to do is I'm just going to drag it up. And you can see that just by moving that, it's raised that above. Looks pretty good. Really like how that looks. And I'm happy with that. So put that in Z. So I like that. So what I'm going to do now is I want to create a copy over on the right hand side as well. So an easy fix for this is to take it, put it into transform mode, and then on your keyboard, press Control Shift, followed by the letter H, and that will create a copy horizontally about the job center. Okay, and we can see that there. And again, because we've created a direct um, mirrored copy across, we can look at breaking up the actual pattern. So again, 
just on this component alone, I can press H and that will just flip that horizontally about its own center point. So this point here, if I press H, you'll see that's flipped that over. And then I can flip that vertically as well by pressing V on the keyboard like so. And now we can see we've got um, a very different plank to the one on the left hand side. And so it looks like we are using uh, different models all together when actually in fact we're not we're just making use of the various flip and mirror tools so those were the shortcut keys to some of the mirror options that we looked at earlier within the mirror tool okay then so next up we're going to bring in one more plank and then i promise that's the end of all of the planks but you can see we're starting to create a real good crate look uh, so we just want to bring in one more one more plank to create a sign kind of a rustic sign that's going to sit on top and then what we can do then is we can look at v carving some text or or a saying or whatever it is into that sign on top so if we go back to our clip art tab we're going to double click to bring in the plank and then we're just going to position that so i'm just going to press alt and just position that roughly in the center of our crate as we currently have it uh, then i'm just going to hold down shift just to stretch that out a little bit and then maybe bring that up ever so slightly okay so something like that and then i'm just going to rotate it just to give that a little bit of a different look uh, if we double click off that we can see what that looks like perhaps we can just turn it around a little bit more and double click off that to see that okay so that doesn't look too bad if i wanted to i could introduce more height there um so we'll do that now so we'll take that uh, so i'm just double clicking there and all i'm going to do is just bring that up like so okay so we're just creating that dimension there so it just looks like it's uh, well above the actual crate okay so we'll put that in z so next up um, we're now ready to bring in some wheels for the cart okay so we've got a wheel here so let's double click to bring that in uh, we're going to take that and we're just going to shrink it down so i'm pressing um, shift on my keyboard whilst dragging a corner and that's just going to scale everything in proportion there and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to kind of roughly position where i want that to go okay so and I like that looks all right but it's probably better for me to actually see what it looks like with the heights um, all accurate so I want that wheel to look as though it's in front of the cart so we need to create some height there so again we could look at just increasing that base height like so we can bring it up again perhaps just uh, tilt our view so we can take a look at how that looks and then we can have a look on the bottom there so really when you are creating these layouts you want to kind of keep your heights at a minimum okay so you don't want to introduce too much height there so you just want just enough so it looks like it's just sitting above so we'll do that and we'll see how that looks it's not too bad press C and the the telltale as well is to see if you've got any green parts and any green parts will just tell you that you do have uh, parts of the model that are actually hidden away underneath another part. So I'm just going to shrink that wheel down a little bit. It's actually quite big. So we'll just bring that down and you can see straight away we've got those green areas. So again, that's just kind of reinforcing what I was just saying earlier. That's the software's way of saying some of your model is actually hidden away by another component so you might want to look at that and just look at raising it like so okay so that's looking pretty good kind of like what we've got there and then again we want to create the wheel on the other side so we're just going to use that handy mirror trick by selecting it selecting it again to put it into transform mode control shift h and then that will create a copy on the other side about the job center and you can see how that looks there so that's looking pretty good so I'm kind of happy with our cart there for now and so next step now is to fill that cart with autumnal goods so we're going to look at bringing in the gonk we're going to look at the pumpkin the gourd uh, and maybe a leaf or two and we're going to have them sat in the cart as if they're actually sat 
inside of the card okay so we'll start by bringing in our given gong now this is probably my most favorite model so just going to double click on that and we can see what that looks like so i'm just going to just drag this up a moment and we'll just shrink this down i just want to quickly kind of show you what i was talking about earlier about how we create these models um so that they easily they're easily able to work with other models within your project so if we zoom in on our giving gonk over here so you can see we've actually given quite a bit of thickness there in his mittens okay and again that's just so that we can easily pop things in his hands so it looks like he's holding them and it's just going to be really easy for us to do that when we assemble everything in the software so that's why he kind of looks like he's got really big hands at the moment but the idea is that you're meant to put something in his hand um, so we'll just put that in z for now and so now what we're going to do is we're going to position him so i want it so it looks like so we just have his mittens just showing on the top here so we're just going to drag that down like so so kind of somewhere like that and then we'll just make him a little bit bigger okay so bring that down like maybe something like that um, that looks okay however um, you can see his feet and his beard are actually showing through so what we could do is we could look at shrinking him down however i think if we shrink him down we're actually going to lose quite a lot of detail here so what we could do is we could look at actually raising up the cart now you want to have a look at um your setup in terms of your component tree okay so what we could do is increase the height of all of our parts but that's going to take us quite a long time to do so i'm going to show you uh, a little trick that's going to make that 10 times easier and that's by applying a base height to our level so what we're going to do is we're going to actually insert a new level so we're going to right click and use this option here insert a new level and then we're going to take our gonk and we're just going to put him up there okay now you're going to see straight away whoa this looks strange what's going on now it looks like he's adding on top and he is adding on top and that's because our level is set to add so the level is adding on top of the level below it so all we need to do is go to our combine mode and say we want to change the combine mode of this level so that it's merging so everything merges again which is brilliant but now what we want to do is we want to look at increasing the base height of our cart so everything all of the components in level one we just want to raise them all up at the same time so to do that what we can do is double click on the level so if we double click on the level it will open up the properties form and then here we can then adjust the actual base height and so what we can do is we can use the slider if we wanted to to increase that and you can see what's happening now we're adding more height to the overall parts so everything within that level is now being raised by the value that we're actually inputting here and so we can go ahead let's take that to say 0.15 that's looking pretty good his mittens are looking good there we've probably got enough room to uh, add something else for him to hold without it kind of interfering in the cart but what's nice is that their mitten actually overlaps the cart so it looks like he's kind of hanging over a little bit which gives it a bit more of a uh, kind of a realistic look okay so we'll go with that for now and if we need to tweak that anymore we can look at adjusting that uh, shortly so let's just close out so now let's just add in some more items to our cart but first we're going to look at adding a little pumpkin that the gonk is going to be holding so first thing i want to do is I want to make sure we highlight level two and that just means that anything that i drag in or double click into our job is going to be added to this level because that's the level we're now currently working with so if we go to our clip art tab we can have a look we can see we've got pumpkin number two over here we're going to double click on that and that's just going to bring that in okay so we're going to just take that and we're just going to transform it like so and then we're just going to shift it over there and we're just going to move it and then this is probably where now it'd be a good idea for me to actually look at at the heights here so we'll just add a little bit tiny bit of base height we're also going to look at increasing the actual shape height of the model as well okay and if we just zoom in 
just going to twiddle our view. So really what I'm looking for here is I want to make sure that when I raise it by using the base height, that we're not coming too much over the actual crate, which we can see it is there. However, it's not too much of an issue because we can look at other ways for us to kind of shrink that down. We could look at applying perhaps a fade. So I'm just going to look at increasing the base height again. So nudge that up ever so slightly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at just, I just want to kind of decrease the height along the bottom. So I want this perfectly hidden away by the the crate um, that we've got here. So in order for us to apply a fade, or what, what does a fade mean? So fade just means that we can just uh, lower part of our model down um, in, in one one position so if we click on this button here that's just going to bring up a floating properties form and here we can see we've got the option to fade we can also have the option to tilt okay so fade basically reduces the height on one part of your model tilt it's kind of like a base height except it, it creates an angled um, base height to create a tilted effect so we're going to look at using the fade option. So we're going to go and select the fade option. So you've got to check it first. And then you've got to set your anchor points. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to put this in the Z view for now. I'm going to use the set option. You've got to set your first anchor point. So this is where you want um, your first point to go in terms of where you want it to anchor from. Okay. So we're going to click here. Once I've clicked that, you'll see now that my anchor has a number two next to it. And this is where we need to click our second point. So first point is here and we want it to fade down in this direction. So I'm going to click at the bottom here. And then what will happen is the software will automatically put a 50% fade. So what it's done is it's faded the model on the bottom portion by 50% its original size. And you can see what's happening is it's doing exactly what I want it to. It's, it's kind of hiding that behind the crate, which is perfect. However, what we could do is we could actually decrease that fade. So you can see how much we can get away um, fading that until like the actual pumpkin starts coming through. And I think that's that's quite a good amount there. So let's just put that in Z. Um, and then if we just double click on that, okay, so it's not too bad. Another thing that we could do is look at applying a little bit of a tilt. So you can see ever so slightly, we are losing a little bit of the uh, pumpkin stalk to the gonk's nose and his hat. So we could try the opposite at the same time. So a tilt. So we're going to use the set option. So we're going from the bottom to the top. And in fact, actually what we can, we'll see how this looks initially, and then we'll just click to do that so you can see we're raising that or we could actually reset that and say actually I want to set that from here to here so kind of in line of the direction that we actually do want to set it and then what we can do is we can just kind of decrease that like so and then perhaps we want to increase that fade again just to ensure that that's sitting nice nice underneath there okay we've got a tiny bit that needs sort in there so perhaps just a degree or two more and there we have it let's close out and we can see that's sitting nicely there we've got a nice amount of relief there we've got too much height uh, and it looks as though the gonk is holding on to that pumpkin yet the pumpkin is sat underneath below in the crate there and yet it's above uh, the gonk's hat and the nose as well with thanks to the tilt and fade tool so let's add some more items to the cart so let's just take this gourd Okay, so we're going to bring that in and we're just going to take it. We're just going to shrink it down and let's just move that in position. So here we just kind of want it to sat in the background. So we don't want to give it uh, too much attention there. So we're just going to shrink that down like so. Okay, so it's sitting well behind uh, the giving gonk, which I'm happy about. So we'll keep that as it is for now. Uh, let's just add some more pumpkins in. So it's double click to bring in a pumpkin over here. And then we'll just select it again to put it into transform mode. And then we'll just again shrink that down. And we'll just nudge that up. 
you can see we've got a nice big pumpkin there and the height's actually not too bad and what we could do is even look at just increasing the height a little bit just to give it a bit more oomph there so we're really rounding that off it's looking good might take that select it press control and then just create a copy over here and then press h just to flip that horizontally okay so press that twice so it's a bit too quick there um and then we're just going to shrink that down and then we'll just nudge that over to the left hand side there so we want this kind of in front of this gourd here but we also want it uh, in front of this pumpkin over here as well okay so first off let's just take a look at just increasing that base height see how much we can get away with there so it's not too bad so almost there on the both sides there and we can increase our shape height and then perhaps what we could do is just apply a little bit of a fade so fade set that from the top to the bottom we can see that there and then again let's just have a look at uh, just increasing shape height Just increase that fade and again increase that shape height so we're just creating more of a rounded effect but we're still keeping the height along the bottom quite low okay so it's not looking too bad um, what we could do is look at applying a tilt just on the right hand side uh, we can also look at fading the gourd on the right hand side as well and you can see what's happening here is we're really starting to just uh, make tiny tweaks to uh, all of the components here until we're kind of happy with our layout and this very very much is subjective so it's how um, kind of specific you want to be really okay so we've got that there let's just double click out and we'll just take that so you can see pretty much that pumpkin is now in front of uh, this gourd here and then what we could do here is we can try and look at applying a tilt going from left to right and then we'll just increase that like that and then perhaps we could just take down the shape height ever so slightly just kind of nudging that like so but we've still we've still got the plumpness there it's now sitting kind of proud in front of the right pumpkin and it's proud of the gourd there in the background um close out and we'll just put that in c so that's looking pretty good now you could argue that the gourd is actually kind of flattened a bit so let's just see if we can just uh, save that a little bit by just increasing that there and then what we could do is apply a fade okay so let's just increase that fade like so and there we go so that's looking pretty good now okay so you can see we've added more height there we've raised the actual shape it's however it's still looking as though it's in the background which is where it's meant to be so this is looking pretty good right now Okay, so I'm going to add one more uh, piece of clip art to our overall composition. I'm going to bring in this fall leaf. So we're just going to drag that in like so. Take that and we'll just shrink that right down. And then we'll just move that over. And I'm just going to rotate it. And again, we'll just shrink it down. So we want to create this little leaf. So it looks like it's just poking out of uh, the giving gonks hat. Okay, so we just twiddle our view there and then what we could do is apply a little bit of a base height and then perhaps let's just increase that shape height so just giving it really uh just kind of raising all of that up so we could zoom in just to get a better view of that uh, and again let's just take a look over here okay so I'm, I'm happy with the base i'm happy with the actual shape height uh however what we'll do is we'll just look at applying the tilt so we're just raising this bottom portion here so to do that let's go back into our properties form over here and apply a tilt set our first point here and our second point here and then we're just going to do that maybe a little bit more Let's take a look at that. OK, 
Okay, so it might be a little bit too big. So let's just shrink that down. It's kind of a, a very big leaf there. So shrink that down and we'll zoom in. Take a look at the heights. It's looking pretty good. Okay, and we'll just take that, maybe rotate it a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Happy with that. So that's looking pretty good there. So now that I see the composition as a whole, I just want to make one final tweak and that's to the actual, the crate itself. So I think it's quite uh, wide um, or tall even. And so what I want to do is just shrink it down ever so slightly. So I'm just going to select uh, all of the plank components like so. And then I'm just going to take it and just shrink it ever so slightly. So it looks something like that. And then what I'll do then is I'll take our wheels and we'll just nudge those up a little bit. Kind of like that. And as I mentioned earlier, assembly is very much um, subjective. It's, it all depends how you want it to look. And I think that that looks much better now. And what I might do just to give us one final little bit of grace is go to our level uh, and we'll just go to the properties. So not only can you double click on the level, you can go to the properties. And then what we'll do is we'll just increase that base height to say 0.19 just to really raise that above um, and there we have it so you can see I haven't added too much there uh, and everything's looking pretty good okay so next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at adding some text that we can ultimately v carve onto our model and then we'll move on to the toolpaths so we're just going to tile our windows and we can take a look at our 2D view. Then we're going to go into our drawing tab and we're going to use this option here to draw some text. Okay, so we're just going to look at um, the fonts that we're going to use. So you can see I've got all my favourite fonts uh, listed at the top here. However, I want to use a kind of bolder font for our sign. So I'm just going to search down and uh, we're going to go and have a look at this one here. Okay, so we're going to use Kandara. And then in here, I'm just going to type in my font. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it all in capitals. And I'm going to call this one Harvest Time. Okay, so something like that. Close out and then we're just going to take that. We just plonk that in the middle. So I'm going to press F9. And then I'm just going to shift that down. What I want to do is just bring the text closer together. So we're going to use this option here to edit our text spacing where we're going to bring the two lines closer together. Okay, so something like that looks good. Uh, we'll just use this uh, selection mode here just to take us out of the um, kerning mode there. And then we're just going to shrink that down slightly uh, and then we're just going to rotate it so it's something like that uh, and then I'm just going to use my arrow keys just to kind of nudge that and that's kind of looking okay so I'm just kind of what I'm doing is I'm just seeing where the text lies against the plank so I can see I've got a nice gap there a similar gap along the bottom and then I just want to kind of bring that to the center of the plank there Alternatively, the other thing that I could do, and the easiest thing I could do is probably select the actual plank itself, go in here and then say, align to the center of the last item, which was my plank. Okay, so we'll just close out and there we have it. So I'm happy with that. Right then, so now we have pretty much have everything ready to go ahead and create our toolpaths. One final thing that I do want to do, and that is to create a vector boundary around the outside of my model. So we need to go into the modeling tab. I'm just going to select all of our components by holding down shift and then selecting the last component in the tree. And we're going to use this option here to create a vector boundary and that will create a boundary around the, our entire selection. So if we just click out just to deselect those components, we can see this vector here. And if we click on that, we're able to see what that actually looks like. Okay, you can see we've got some vectors in here. We've got this one here. They're kind of unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to press U to ungroup our vectors. And then I'm just going to uh, deselect uh, the outer vector here 
and then we're just going to deselect these vectors for the wheel here and then these ones over here okay so just clicking on those like so and then we'll also deselect this one and then the ones that are left over we're actually just going to delete them and then what we can do is we can take those vectors there shift and select that vector there and then we can press G to group them and these are the vectors that we'll need uh, in order for us to run our profile toolpath right and so we have pretty much everything ready now for us to start thinking about how we'll machine this so let's switch over to the toolpaths tab okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this section here and this is where we're going to set up our part according to the actual setup on our CNC with the material that we're cutting into. Okay, so we are working with a material thickness of 0.6. We're going to set our XY date and position to the lower left hand corner, which is over here. And we're going to set our Z0 position to the material surface. Okay, so next up we need to specify our model position in the material. So this is where we uh, position the model within the thickness of our material that we're cutting into. So I just want to drop it down ever so slightly. So I just want to have a little gap above um, and below our model of 0.1. So we're going to have a gap of 0.1 above. Uh, and that just ensures that if we have uh, any discrepancies in our material thickness, we're going to avoid any flat spots when we're machining. And then also we're creating extra thickness on the bottom as well for our model. Okay, so that's pretty much that. You want to check over your rapid Z gaps um, above your material, your home start position, ensuring everything is safe and appropriate for your particular setup as usual. Right, and so when you're happy with that, you could go ahead and press OK. Now, if you've never done a 3D project or a design and make project before, um, it's quite simple. The toolpaths are very easy. Generally, you just have four toolpaths. Uh, so you've got your 3D roughing toolpath, which uses a flat tool to kind of clear out material. So it's safe then to go in with your next toolpath, which is a 3D finished toolpath. And the 3D finished toolpath uses a smaller, ball nose tool and that's going to enable you to get out all of the detail within your 3D part. Third tool that we're going to use is a V-bit and that's with a V-carve toolpath. So that's if you're going to V-carve any text for personalization. For example, we are doing the harvest time on uh, this plank of wood here. However, you can change that text to whatever you want it to be. And then finally, you, we go back to an end mill tool to then cut our part out of our material. It's very easy, very simple. And if you go to the Design and Make website and take a look at many of our videos, you'll see the same set of toolpaths being used. Um, and that's how easy it is. So we're going to have a look at that now. So we're going to start by looking at a 3D roughing toolpath. So as I said, the 3D roughing toolpath enables us to use a larger flat tool uh, to kind of hog away the majority of the material. Uh, so it's safe uh, for us to go in with a smaller, finer tool to get out that fine detail. So typically, for the size that we're working with, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill here. We're going to specify our machine and limit boundary to our vector. So we're going to machine everything inside of these vectors, whereby we're going to apply a little bit of an offset. Typically, you want to go the radius of the tool that you're using. So I'm actually going to just extend that past uh, the edge of uh, the vector by an eighth of an inch to ensure that we roll past the, past the edge of our model. We're also going to apply um, a machining allowance. That just means that we're going to leave uh, a skin of material on our finished part so that our finished tool can uh, chip away at that portion when it does the finished pass. And that's just so that we don't damage uh, any of the material with this uh, flat bottom tool. Next up, we've got the roughing strategy. Do we want to do that in a Z-level strategy or a 3D raster? In this case, I'm just going to go with a raster strategy. It kind of makes sense for me to just go horizontally uh, in this. It's probably the most efficient way of doing that, uh, where I'm going to run a profile around each um, level last. So the raster angle, we're going to set for that at zero degrees. So that's going to run horizontally there, back and forth. 
if we wanted to we can add in a ramp plunge move so we'll do that so that just takes the pressure of the tool plunging directly vertically into our material so we'll just put a little small value in there of a let's say a quarter of an inch in there give that a name we'll just call that one 3d roughen and then we could go ahead and calculate that okay and then we can preview that to see what that looks like so there's your first step second third fourth and you can see those steps in there We've cleared away quite a lot of the material and now we can go in there with our smaller um, ball nose tool to create the finished detail so we'll close out here now we're going to go into our 3d finish tool path so we're going to use an eighth inch ball nose here Again, we want to use this selected uh, vector here, boundary offset. I'm actually going to go the full diameter just to ensure that we're going all the way past there. And then we're going to go with a raster strategy or an offset strategy. So in this case, I'm going to go the raster, setting that angle to zero degrees. Call that one 3D finish. Go ahead and press calculate. And you can see now that those lines are much more dense because we are using a smaller tool. Uh, it has a much smaller step over and that's going to give us that detail. So we could go ahead and preview that and we can see what that's going to look like. And that's looking pretty good. You can see we've got the detail there. I'm happy with the level of detail there. If you wanted to, if you wanted more detail, you could think about adding in another tool to that tool path and do rest machining. However, I'm happy with uh, um, the eighth inch and how that's looking in our preview right then next up we're going to go and take our text and we're going to do a v-carve toolpath uh, we're going to use a 90 degree v-bit tool see how that looks we're going to set our start depth to zero and use this option here to project the toolpath onto the 3d model and what that does is it will essentially does as it is it's going to project it onto the surface of the model which is perfect especially if your model um, can be of different kind of heights or if it's like a wavy effect you can follow that along in this case it is fairly flat so it's kind of easy for us anyway here but always use that option if you're wanting to have that vcarv toolpath follow the flow of your model and then go ahead and press calculate and then we can preview that and see what that looks like that looks pretty neat love that close out and then what we can do is run our final toolpath which is our cutout so go into our profile toolpath select our vector so i'm going to cut all the way through so this time i'm just going to put uh, z equals and then that will pull out the thickness that i applied there and here we're going to use a uh, eighth inch end mill to cut this out. So we're going to go and find my eighth inch tool uh, and then we're going to machine that on the outside. Uh, and we want to add tabs to this to hold it in place. So we're going to go with a length of say 0.3 and a thickness of uh, an eighth of an inch. We we'll use the edit tabs option. And then what we can do is just kind of strategically place our tabs in appropriate areas okay so something like that and i think that will give it enough hold there and then um we can go in we can add ramps leads and any other items to this if we wanted to uh, and so in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and give that a name so we'll call that one profile and then we'll go ahead and press calculate and we will preview that and then delete away our waste material and that's what our part will look like. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm really happy with the way that, uh, with the amount of detail that we've got there, it's perfect. And I think this one is now ready to save out, ready for machining. Okay, so there we have it. So hopefully you've seen how easy it was for me to assemble all of those models from the Design and Make project in Vectric software. And we only really touched on some of the basic tools. So we looked at how we could use the transform tools to create our layout. And then we looked at various height adjustment tools to get the correct Z heights for the composition. And so we looked at how we could add base heights, shape heights, fades, tilts, uh, level base heights as well in order for us to get that correct layout and I think it looks great. Now I do encourage you to head over to designandmake.com, sign up and get access to all of the free clip art that I showed you earlier and then you can see for yourself just how good our models are and cut them in your next CNC project. 
Now, if you fancied having a go at this particular project, as I mentioned, this one is exclusive to the user group meeting and you can get access to that from the user group meeting purchasable pack. So I hope you like this video and if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll get to them as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and happy making.